Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to NASCAR Racing 2003 season, the 2019 mod with the 2020 car set. And first off, I wanna say, awesome for NASCAR to get the cup guys racing in iRacing. Homestead was a very cool race, and they are racing again this Sunday at Texas. And so are we, uh, myself and Brandon on the front row. He's to our left in that WreckingAndRacing.com podcast, Toyota. If you're a fan of NASCAR and looking for a new podcast to listen to, head on over to WreckingAndRacing.com. So we are on the outside of the first row for 34 wonderful laps here at Texas, waiting for that green flag to come out green flag is big in the air we can't beat brandon across the line we'll short shift just a bit i believe we've got a clean start brandon there on the inside we got kevin harvick behind us and driving through turn one and two pretty wide open so far we'll get that run off the high lane see if we can clear brandon down the back stretch and indeed we can uh it's a tale of two ends of the racetrack much like charlotte and atlanta I struggle a bit going into turn three and four. You can see Brandon got that big drive to our outside looking outside. We'll lead lap one, however. So that is some bonus points in our back pocket. But Brandon fighting hard on that outside lane. Looks like cars behind us are getting single file as well. Kevin Harvick leading that charge and possibly uh, Tyler Reddick there. Continuing his good season. Speaking of good seasons, we're having an okay season. Still looking for that first win. Brandon has two at this point, and we're still looking for win number one. And Brandon fighting hard on that outside, looking for win number three. So we will need to pit. Uh, we'll be looking at about the halfway mark, so lap 17 or so. Really loose on the bottom of turn one, Texas even with this repave is extremely loose on the bottom and Brandon gets that charge to the outside running side by side. We'll get into the bottom of turn three. I think the bottom is okay, but Brandon really powers to that outside and he is going to get us cleared off into the dog leg. Brandon will lead that lap there. We'll try not to fall into the clutches of Kevin Harvick and we will roll turn one and two. Now in practice, I've noticed that we are much better than Brandon in turns one and two, and we're showing our strength down there at the bottom, and then he will get us in three and four. And quite frankly, I would like to be better on this side of the racetrack coming to the line. If the start-finish line was on the back stretch, then I'd feel really good about our chances, but Brandon gets a really good drive through three and four, and gapping us just a little bit as we are gapping Harvick. This race tends to go green as well, uh, once they single file out and get strung out very fast and uh, tough to pass when you're single file like this. So we'll settle in and let the laps click by as long as we can continue to gap. Uh, Harvick will be okay. Looks like uh, the third, fourth, and fifth place cars are still in a little bit of a pack and uh, single file out back. And Brandon is starting to pull away. Um, looking really strong here at Texas. He drives in hard though in turn one and two. We'll definitely get him here. I don't know if he just got loose and washed up the track. It looked like he bottomed out quite a bit. And of course, when your splitter hits the ground, you lose pretty much all of your control. So put us back to the point and he's dropping back towards Kevin Harvick. I don't know if Harvick has anything for Brandon. In fact, he may be uh, right back up to our rear bumper in a few laps time. And indeed, he did gain on us a bit through turns three and four. We should gap him here through one and two. But it's only going to be a matter of time, but I'm not going to stress it too awful much. Pit stops have to rotate through. And uh, with a four-tire change or possibly a two-tire change, a strategy can be thrown into the mix. So we're, uh, we have some options. We do have to fill up quite a bit on our fuel tank. So... Probably fuel four tires is going to be the way to go. And as long as we don't get damage or, or stuff it into the fence like we're trying to do here, uh, we'll be able to get off on pit road uh, just fine. The car is uh, interesting for sure. Uh, very loose to start. Uh, once the pressures come up at about this point, the car tends to drift to the, the, uh, the tight side. And with this being a modded racetrack, the line is very particular on where the grip is. Down here in turn one right, uh, below that seam, you can see uh, on that bottom lane is where all the grip is. And if you don't 
stay on that white line, you kind of push up. Turn three is still a bit of enigma for me. Uh, driving in too hard, arcing it in too late. We're maintaining our gap okay. Well, I say that, and here comes Brandon with a head of steam. We'll see if he looks to the inside. No, he looks to the outside. We'll give him the outside lane if he wants to take it, and we'll see if we can do a better job hitting uh, that white line. We did a much better job through that turn, but the car got a little bit loose on corner exit. So still, as these pressures come up, it's a little bit on the free side. And that was a little bit better turn three for us. It's just all about how quickly you can get back to the gas, how hard you can get back to the gas because you carry all of that speed down this front dog leg and into turn one. Yeah, this is a much better entry for us here on turn one. We'll keep our left sides right under that seam and that's where we get all of our power from. Just launching off the turn, getting out to the wall, uh, rounding up that corner as much as we possibly can. And on the bottom, you can hear Brandon scraping in the background. We're washing up just a bit. Brandon is glued to that inside. He didn't get that monster run. Perhaps he's getting a bit aerotight back there. Not able to uh, follow us in our tire tracks completely without washing up. It's a game of cat and mouse right now. And the uh, AI are not a part of it, which is surprising. They were wicked fast in qualifying. So... I was expecting a little bit more of a charge from our artificial intelligent counterparts, but not running that, uh, that intelligently today, it seems. Either that or myself and Brandon are glued to this racetrack, almost like he is glued to our bumper going into turn one. We'll wash up a bit. We drove in a little bit hard, so we didn't check up and uh, run ourselves into him. And turn three and four, we'll see if we can figure this side out. He really keeps it planted. It's almost like he uh, stays in the gas for much longer than we do, and he can get that car to really rotate on the bottom and carry all that speed down. He's right there on our bumper, doesn't make a, doesn't make a move, stays in line as this race uh, wears on. Still plenty of time to go. And we'll be uh, mindful of these laps as they click down. Once we reach the halfway mark, we'll be looking for pit road. We'll start breaking right there at the Texas logo in the middle of three and four. And you can see the three, two, one marker down on the bottom. Brandon right to our rear bumper. We're right on the bottom. We don't want to Dale Jr. this thing and plant our left front in that grass and just explode. Granted, that's not in 2K3, but you can imagine what it would be like if it was. A decent turn one and two exchange. And Brandon is just planted back there, scraping. It's, it's that fine line where he is on the racetrack getting the most out of that splitter, but any lower he would be bottoming out. He is on the bottom. We'll roll out and see if we can get down back to the bottom here. And he'll complete that pass off the corner. And we'll see if he gaps us in turn three. He gives us the outside lane. Comes up to block, okay, I see you. And we'll see if he stretches it out here. He grinds down just a bit. I don't know if his springs are, ow. Well, we definitely don't need that. We'll turn off damage, that wasn't a huge hit, but uh, we definitely do not want to spend any extra time on pit road uh, buffing that out. He drives into turn one a little bit wide. It's almost like I can see where he's going wrong in turn one and two, just like he was seeing where we were going wrong in three and four. It's keeping us really close together. Uh, this is the closest, I think, battle we've had all year that wasn't on a plate track. Back and forth, leading laps, alternating, crossover move. And uh, we can afford to do this because there is no AI pressure from behind. So thankfully, uh, we have some room to slide up to make a mistake. If we drive into the turn too hard, we don't have to worry about giving up any positions. Uh, we can drive as hard as we need to, which is refreshing because uh, next week at Bristol, uh, once that conveyor belt gets moving, we will run out of track quick. But we are peeling off the track right here, 3,500 in second gear. Brandon will be in pit stall number one. We will be in stall number two. 
looking for those AI cars to drive around us. There they go. Looks like Kyle Busch is leading the pack of the AI cars, and they're pretty much stretched out in single file. There was a pass there, but pretty much single file all the way back, so a yellow doesn't look likely. And here we go into our stall, four tires and fuel, boys. Let's go. Right sides are on. Brandon is still trying to get into his pit box. Now his right sides go up. That's going to be a massive advantage for us, but we are going to have to drive around, dump the clutch just a bit, and around we go. And Brandon's service is just now getting complete. So he came in just a second behind us, and he is going to leave maybe five or six seconds behind us. A costly mistake overshooting, and on these modded tracks, the pit box uh, can be pretty narrow. So if you're over just by a millimeter, the crew just shakes their head and goes, nope, not going to do it. But what we are going to do is go to the outside of these cars. They will be looking to pit as well. Around the 38, washing up, have to roll out of the gas really bad. John Hunter Nemechek sort of blocking our way. So we can go around pretty easily there and keep an eye out for all of these uh, lapped cars. Well, cars that have put us a lap down, but uh, making up time, fresh tires, are very, very good here at Texas. As you can see us pick them up and lay them down. We're going to give these guys a wide berth. Here comes Eric Jones down to pit road. Bowman, the 22. And I believe we will be getting back on the lead lap this time. So if a yellow were to come out, we would be in the back, but we would be on the lead lap. What we need to do is uh, have it go one more lap of green and we can catch up to all of these guys and cycle back around. Looking in the mirror, I don't see Brandon at all, but he does have quite a bit to make up, and I imagine he is going to be uh, in traffic uh, once they come up. We're going to look and see where uh, Bush and Harvick come back out on the racetrack. Looking to the left, I think I see him there on pit road. We're going around Daniel Suarez, who uh, that will put one lap down, and the 15 and the double zero of Quinn Hoff as well. So we're with the back markers now. We must have gained a ton of time uh, on pit stops because, you know, those guys were nowhere in the windshield and now we have put them a lap down. So we got on and off pit road quite well and it's looking like the cars in front of us are all uh, going to be put one lap down. So we've got a little bit of buffer between ourselves and Brandon. We're not going to run 100%, 100% of the way. We're going to save tires as much as we can, we're not going to change up our strategy drastically, but everyone is on and off pit road. If the yellow were to come out, we would cycle back to the lead. And uh, we want some fresh tires here. These guys are going to have one lap to two lap fresher tires on us, and that could play into a late race charge if there is a late race caution for sure. So we're going to keep focus. Not going to pay too much attention into the mirror. One thing about Brandon's setup, whoa, the 21 of Matt De Benedetto is stopped up on the racetrack, and that will bring out the caution and bring everyone back together. We're going to come back to the line. No need to overdrive it. We will trap the double zero and the 15 one lap down. Yellow flag is out, and you can see the, uh, the catch fence has those yellow lights running around the fence. Very cool here at Texas. But uh, we will not be coming back to pit road. We will rack them up and we'll see you for the restart.
in turn three now ready for the restart brandon is four cars back we're single file under 10 laps to go and he has to get past those lap cars that would be behind everybody had this been the 2020 rules but unfortunately 2k3 doesn't understand that so we'll have a little bit of buffer between ourselves and Brandon, but these tires are garbage to start, but green flag is back out. We'll see Quinn Hoff might have spun the tires a bit, but he and the 15 are uh, back there struggling, looking for Brandon to make a pass on uh, Suarez back there. Brandon up to the high lane, trying to get that run. You can see him, that blue car to the outside. As long as those lap cars go two and even three wide, that will help us out. I imagine Brandon can't be none too happy uh, as this caution was his chance to really get back up to us, but it's certainly not over. If he can clear those guys, he can eat into our lead pretty quickly. We're just going to have to drive hard and see what we've got here. Make sure that we can hit that bottom. That Washing up above the seam, a little loose on throttle. Brandon is still out there. He is still not around. That double zero of Quinn Hoff in open track. It sounds like uh, Daniel Suarez might be giving him everything, but he's three wide around the outside, making it stick back there. We're definitely going to watch that on the replay as uh, I'm sure he is not happy with those lap cars that won't get out of the way. It does look like he is clear now, setting sail for us. So we're gonna have to keep eyes out of the windshield, see if we can hit turn three decently. If a yellow were to come out now, we might finish this race under caution. So we need to uh, drive defensively as best we can and drive as hard as we are able as he is uh, really reeled us in. That is for sure. He got a massive run through three and four. Let's go into turn one and two. This is our better end of the racetrack. We get a little loose on corner entry, wash up above the dotted line. Brandon had a better one and two right there, but he doesn't gain on us down the straightaway. This is where uh, we're really going to have to, to go hard and see if we can make it stick. Driving into the corner a little bit harder than I was used to, and we bottomed out just a skosh. Perhaps we might have picked up something on the bottom. Luckily, tire pressures are back up and temperatures are good, so we're back to the car that we sort of had to start. And a nice turn one and two for us, carrying all of that speed. We'll try turn three again and see if we can make it stick on the bottom. And the car is behaving a little bit better than it had earlier in the race. White flag is out, one lap to go, just a car length and a half over Brandon here. He's going to give it everything he's got, but he may have uh, buzzed the tires a bit trying to get around those lap cars. We wash up, carry speed a bit. No real closure rate. If we can nail turn three and four, it's ours, but one slip up and Brandon is right there to take advantage. We went in a bit, Brandon scraping back there, but he's gonna run out of time. And ladies and gentlemen, we have got our first win of the year here at Texas. It's a weight off. We were okay on points, but it's always good to start working on some bonus points for that championship drive. A good drive and a good uh, recovery by Brandon for sure. That caution flag helped him out, but the lap cars certainly hurt him for sure. So we will take the checkered flag uh, in first. Brandon will take it in second. In third place, we have Kyle Busch. Fourth place, Kevin Harvick. Fifth place, Joey Logano. Sixth place, Tyler Reddick. Seventh place, Jimmy Johnson. Eighth place, Martin Truex Jr. Ninth place, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And rounding out your top 10 is Denny Hamlin. So let's take a look at the uh, issues uh, Brandon was having on that start. It didn't look like he had a clean uh, race off the line. So single filed up, he'll go to the outside. And the thing about 2K3 is the AI's tires don't seem to cool down on caution. So they are still hooked up and flying on the initial laps. The players' cars, however, our tires cool off. We, we can't keep grip and heat in the, in the tires, and that hurts us on the short run. So these late cautions definitely, oh, and the 15 checks up bad. 
Brandon had to take an evasive maneuver to get around the 15, and that allowed Harvick and Almirola to get by, still making a charge on that outside. Uh, Brandon's best friend is that double zero, who can really choke up the bottom there. If Brandon got the drive here, uh, he looked to go three wide at some point, and there he goes around the outside of the double zero, nearly clips him, and he gets that massive drive off the turn past Suarez in the 96, and uh, he got up to us, but uh, it was a little bit too little too late. So let's take a look at the standings. We move up into third place now uh, with our win, but Kyle Busch is still ahead of us based on his points. Brandon is still your point leader with two wins. Jimmy Johnson is your cutoff driver. Two drivers, uh, Larson and Hamlin, are one race ahead, but between 10th and 20th, still a lot of movement can happen. Jimmy Johnson certainly is not safe in that transfer spot. Just three points from 13th all the way down to 16th. Really tight. And next week, we go to the Bull Ring at Bristol. Short track racing at its best. But that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you next week for Bristol. Take care.